All right, this part two of the hood story, man. Part two of the hood story. Pay attention. I know I'm talking a little bit fast, but right now, this is the way I want to do my hood story. Can I do me? This is the way I want to do my hood story. This is right here about Jamaican trying to cop from me, the man that went crazy. So I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. But right now, I just want to start this up, let you know that this is an introduction to penitentiary. Don't do it so you don't wind up in the penitentiary. That's why I got the penitentiary background still, even though it's a hood story. All right. Uh, unique Mac Audio, man. So now I'm going to sit here. I'm going to finish this part two of the hood story with my man. I wish I could tell you his name. He got a crazy name. This is Jamaicans. Remember in part one, I was over there chilling, you know, with my man up in the Jamaican spot when the shootout happened and da 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 And I met the crazy dude just came to Jamaica and da 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 He's trying to get on with the hustle and this man put me on him. Okay. So now let's ride. You know what I mean? Hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button right now. Hit the subscribe button hit the like button. All right? So now... Like I said, I cruise down um, Edgecombe, you know, home of the Jamaicans, you know, tall glassine bottles, big pregnant uh, nickel bags, you know. So I cruise down Edgecombe, and I see my man, he tell me this man trying to cop. So later on that day, you know what I mean, me and my man chilling, the, the, the Jamaican homie, I go pick him up, and he telling me that's his brethren from Jamaica, he good people, you know what I mean, he put his life on it, he held him down a number of times, you know, doing the political wars in Jamaica, and he just come up, and he trying to help him get some money so he can send some money back to his family and help, you know, fund, you know, the vote get to them. You know, I'll tell you about the vote get to them later. But anyway, so me and him hanging, so we do a little shopping, we shoot over the Fordham Road, you know, holler a couple of girls out the window, you know what I mean? At this time, I'm driving the Sahara Green, you know, uh, um, what they call it, the Sahara Green Sahara, you know what I mean? This is uh, what they call it. I, I don't know if y'all remember it because that's why I'm talking. I know we're talking about back in the day. I'm talking about this the Jeep, like a Jeep Wrangler, but it's like an army green. The, the, uh, we took the doors off the joint, the roof off the joint. You know what I mean? We even broke the front windshield down with a breeze blowing your chest. Because it's a hot summer day in New York. I might even show you a picture there. I guess I got pictures of everything. Just relax. Right now, this is just YouTube. But when I do the documentary, you're going to see all this. So be on the lookout for the documentary. So we riding down the joint, and I got the big straw hat on, you know, the big country straw hat. I got my, 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 my shirt off. I got about five, six um, Gucci link, the, 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 the egg-shaped nuggets, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 the, 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 you know, the, the Cuban links, you know, I, I, got, I got a big picture of Africa with Nefertiti in the middle, you know what I mean? Just, you know, just... Show you, you know, we floss it. You know, I got about five bracelets on on each hand, rings on every finger. Straight Jamaica and out in Harlem time back then. You know, when you get money, because we talking about 88. So now, we chilling. And while we riding out the joint, you know, of course, the girls all want us. Got that Jamaican music blasted, you know what I mean? And I... You know, and, you know, come on, two black Jamaicans, you know, chilling. My man had the bald head and, you know, I, 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 I had the little, the, the little flat top with the curls trying to look like a, you know, a, a, a cute Nino Brown or something. You know what I mean? A, a cute, oh, uh, what was that boy named Aaron Hall that was big representing for the black boys back then. So now I'm riding down uh, Fordham Road. And excuse me for kissing my teeth. I'm just in my zone out Jamaican thing down. So no disrespect to nobody if you hear me slip up because I'm trying to correct that. They told me the comments. They didn't really like that. So I'm trying to abide and I apologize to anybody that don't like it. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Keep it moving. So now I'm riding down Fordham Road. So we meet a couple of Spanish girls over there. Everything jumping nice. You understand what I'm saying? Everything jumping nice. And, uh, you know, we meet the little Spanish girl, so he tell me that this man trying to cop. So I said, all right, we'll tell him I'll see him later on when it get dark. Because right now, I just want to party and draw the Jeep with the top with the top down. And, you know, when I say the party, meaning anywhere I go is a block party. I got the crazy stereo system in the back. I got like four 10-inch woofers, you know what I mean, in the back. You know what I mean? I got a, a, a bar going across the roll bar with, 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 with the mid-range and the highs. So when I'm coming, I mean, whenever I pull up, I mean, the, it, 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 you see the dust. You see the dust coming up off the ground from the bass beating so hard. You know what I mean? You know, big shout out to the white boys that put the music system in. I can't tell you their name because they testified against me. You know what I mean? They ain't no good, cold rats. But you know what I mean? It is what it is. They did what they did. You know, I'm out here now. But anyway, so every block I go on is a party. So me and my man, we pull over there to uh, 183rd in Cortland. You know what I mean? Y'all remember 183rd in the Bronx in Cortland. You know what I mean? Big shout out to the third. Big shout out to the third. 
You know what I mean? One of the third and quarter was jumping. All Jamaicans over there back there said, where are my bread and them there? So I pull up over there and I throw in a Jamaican tape and I got it bumping and everybody out there, they coming through, they copping, everybody doing what they do. All the girls out there, they loving this. You know what I mean? So now we chilling. So we decided to go uh, um, to, to, to Harlem. So now we go down there by uh, Lennox and 7th. You know what I mean? By the gas station. That's another little Jamaican strip. <laughs> Big shout out to Lennox and, uh, uh, Lennox and 7th. Big shout out, big shout out. You know, so right now I'm on my Jamaican time, hanging out with my Jamaican homie because, you know, I'm straight uh, yard man. So he ain't really trying to go in the American neighborhood. But, you know, of course, I got to take him through one of them, you know what I mean, or two of them. You know what I mean? So then I shoot down to 112th Street and St. Nick. Big shout out, you know what I mean, to Slick and the family, Rambo, Sasquatch, Edie, I mean, you know what I mean? Um, Rome, everybody out there, man. You know, big shout out to Fritz. That's where I went down that block. So now I throw in the Brucey B tape and we chilling. So I'm taking y'all a little ride with me. So sit back, let me enjoy the ride. If y'all like this, you already know how to do it. They got a thing on the, on, on, on the YouTube that you can just click to another channel if you don't like where I'm at. No disrespect. But just let me ride and enjoy my show the way I want to do it, please. So now I'm over on 112th Street. I'm chilling with the Americans down there. I got my man Hannibal down there, his sister Kiki, everybody. So we out there, music playing. And, you know, you know, Rambo, everybody. We just doing our thing. You know, like I said, big shout out to my brother again, Sasquatch. So, um, you know, and, and, and Big Gene. Big Gene used to be down there, you know, uh, in the fish market with Slick. So we can't forget Slick and the family. Definitely can't forget Slick and the family, right? So now I got my Jamaica homie down there. We're chilling. So now it's starting to get dark. So I said, all right, well, let me go, go back to the crib and go change. So I go drop him off. I tell him, yo, tell your man uh, beat me in an hour. So I shoot over there to the, um, uh, to the Bronx. I'm living over there on Field Place. Field Place right around the corner from um, 183rd and Cortland. You know what I mean? At the time, I'm living in 108 Field Place. Y'all know where that's at if y'all from over there in that area, right across the street from the school. So you already know. So that's my little hideaway because I'm all over in Harlem. I'm doing my thing. And you know what I mean? I just pop up on the Jamaicans here and there. So I could just slide in as long as I go over there with a car that they never seen before and everything good. You know what I mean? So I'm over there chilling. And while I'm trying to not suck my teeth, bear with me. Hit the like button, cash app, and they go to Instagram on there. You need to make audio. You know what it is, man. I don't care if it's $5 cent something because the game is to be sold. Not told that's the way I was raised. You know what I mean? So all y'all that don't understand that those etiquettes, you know what I mean? That's on YouTube. That's on you. The, the, the old school, we already know. You like the service, you tip. You like the content, you tip. No disrespect. A little $5 ain't going to kill nobody. It's going to make things a little better. These outfits cost a little money for me to look good. Let me take this off so you can see. You know what I mean? All this costs, man. You know what I mean? I'm going to wear it one time because if I wear it two times, all of a sudden, y'all going to say, oh, he broke. He wearing the same thing. So make sure your man look good. So when you share the video, you tell you somebody, go check out Unique Make Audio. He represent. You don't want them to say, man, you sent me over to do with those dusty ass collar wearing a dirty t-shirt, da, 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 da. You know what I mean? So that's why you look out. So now let me keep it back in step. So now my man beeps me. An hour later, he beeps me and I shoot up there to go meet him. So when I go meet him, it was a drought. They got a drought every year between uh, uh, May and June and then again November and December. That's when the, um, the, the Medellin, as my man uh, uh, Johnny the Connect taught me to pronounce it, because I'm in Jamaica and some of call it Medellin. You know what I mean? So that's, I'm going to still say my Medellin, but thank you, Johnny. You know what I mean? You know, so that's where the Medellin take up all their drugs off the street. They don't send nothing else out there. Whatever's on the street, stay on the street, and that's what's being sold, and they take an inventory. The same way Walmart and everything else take, in take inventory, because remember, this is a corporation that we're running, an enterprise. So, you know, the Medellin take their drugs off the street during that time. So this is summertime. May, June is hot as hell. So there's no drugs out there. Drugs are short because they're not putting nothing out till after they do inventory, right? So while we're chilling, you know, you know what it is. You see, I'm just chilling, relaxing. Just enjoy the ride, man. I'm your old uncle telling your old wall story from an 88. So now we're chilling and there's no drugs. So I got, remind me to tell you the video how that go, you know, when a drought hit. You know what I mean? But the, but the, the keys go up to as much as $40,000 a key when two days before it might have been $15,000 a key on the street. Now it's $40,000. Explain, I'll explain to you why if you want it, put it in the comment. But anyway, so it's a drought. At this time, the keys is like $25,000 it was just $15,000. So at this time when it dropped like that, that's when, you know, you got to make what you got last because you don't know when they're going to put something else out, but you know they're going to be too soon. So you take the drugs you got, you put a good cut on it. You know what I mean? It cost me $80,000 to learn how to cut. You know what I mean? Um, uh, powder cocaine. 
you know, with isotol to compress it to still look like fish scale and still be good, except it still lose maybe 60, 40. So you, you put a gram in, you get back six grams, you lose four grams if you try and cook it. But it cost me $80,000 to learn how to cook it. That's what I mean by the game is to be sold, not told. I know y'all say, man, I mean how to cut it. You know, I ain't going to tell you what I paid to learn how to cook it. But, you know, so that's why, you know, you cut it um, with the isotol. And when you cut it with the isotol and you got everything uh, 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 down packed, y'all going to see this saying, man, I'm not paying that much. I paid 80000 to learn how to uh, cut it, and I made that money back in one night plus some. You know what I mean? Because I took a key, made two keys, and it, uh, made 1,800 grams because I wanted to come back 60-40. That means if they put in a, 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 a gram, you know, they're going to get back six lines. Instead of 10, they only lose four. They don't complain that much. They still get enough to get high, and it's a little more than half. And a little more than half look like a hell of a lot more than half because you see half, then you look at it and think that maybe it's less than half, and you feel you got beat. But, you know, if you get back 60, 40, then you feel like, you know, you did something wrong. You don't really blame it on a man. You know what I mean? That's over there in the chef doing his thing. So, but these are Jamaicans, cold killers. Like I said in, the, in part one, they don't decapitate people and all that. So being they don't decapitate people, you already know what time it is. You know what I mean? You don't play with these dudes. Not if you got any goddamn sense. I'm not telling youngies, don't get involved in crime that way. You don't have to figure this out because I know a lot of people that crossed the wrong people because they didn't think that they was going to do nothing to them because they wouldn't have done nothing to that person. So they put their mentality, their morals, their principle, and their hustleomics into the next person. But these dudes ain't nothing nice, so you don't want to play with them. Don't get involved in the street. Don't get involved in drugs. It ain't worth it. You're going to meet the wrong person. They're going to put up with that crap, and you don't want to get, boop, joint taken off. So now... I tell them straight up, because like I said, you got to be a man when you're dealing with these type of killers, you know? But I'm even a man when I'm dealing with the softest dude because I want to keep my reputation right because the softest dude, they might go hire one of these killers to go, boop, your head because you done played them and robbed them. So I ain't robbed nobody. That's why they love me. I go on any block, do what I want to do, and I get love because I show love and I play fair. So now, dude sits there, and I tell them straight up, right? I tell my man, because my man wanted to buy some. I tell my man, I said, look, what I got was uh, was cut. It's only good for sniffing. You could only put it in the glassine bottles. These makers really didn't sell crack anyway. So that's why I'm letting them know. I said, it's good for what you're doing because you're selling powder. You know what I mean? So as far as powder, they sniff it, they're going to get high as hell because it's a 60-40. You know what I mean? But if you put it in a pot and try and cook it, you're going to lose, you know, a fourth. You know what I mean? You, you know, you're going to lose too much, you know? So he like, all right, all right. So I sell him something, my man. So I sell my man something. He go, bop, he knocks it out. He come right back. He buys another key. You know what I mean? So he sell that, come right back, buy another key. He loving it. He making big profit because there's no drugs out there, and he's only selling the sniffers. So now he tell me that his managers came up, the crazy one with the black eyes that you don't want to look into. Mind you, have a cat's eyes that you can see into the depths of his soul to see all the trauma you know what I mean? And trials and tribulations that he's been through and he's seen. Now, he brings him to me and he wants to cop. So I gives him the same spell. I said, look, this only good for the tall bottles when the drought over, you know, or maybe next week after I get rid of some of these that I already cut up because it cost me 80000 to learn how to do it because the game to be sold not told. That's why I hit the cash app, send a little $5 and stop the games, cop the book of Roy and Harlem. They go to cash app on the screen. Now, hit the like button and subscribe. So I tell him that, you know, it, 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 it's not good, you know, for cooking, but it's good for sniffing. So a dude just comes to Jamaica. He didn't really understand the difference between cooking and that because he never really dealt with, dealt with the cocaine in Jamaica. So he just looking at it like his man making all this money because he's selling this joint a mile a minute. He done sold three keys in three days. You know what I mean? Nobody else got none. He the only one on the block, and he eating, and he tell him that, yo, you go get some for my bread and you need. So he go come get it from me. Uh, and I tell him that ain't no good. But instead, all he wanted was a little nine ounces. This time, remember, this is 88, so I'm still opening keys, get my hands dirty with that crap. You know what I mean? Let's get a crowd. Let's get a round of applause. Let's get a round of applause. I'm still a little nigga this time. Like I said, I don't brag. I don't boast. I just keep it 100. Don't get involved in it. It ain't worth it. I'm just telling this story. So even though it sounds glamorous, it's not glamorous because I laid down in the cell for 26 years for this. So now... Do come south for kissing teeth again, fellas. Every time I do it and I'm conscious, I'm going to apologize. Okay, because I do need to correct that. So now he comes and he cops, you know, uh, nine ounces. So he copped the nine ounces from me. And then later on that night, he calls me back. You know what I mean? So now when he calls me back, I say, what's up? He said, yo, um, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to get nine more. You know what I mean? So now he go tell his man that he's trying to get nine more. So I calls him. I call my man, my man, man. 
You know what I mean? I was hanging out with, you know, early in the day, the one I've been giving this good shit to. I tell him, yo, I got this joint. You know what I mean? Um, I said, your man just called me. He wanted another nine ounces. I thought you said he just started. He moving it like that. He said, you already know Ed's called my boom, sire. You know, Ed's called my boom. I saw where I get money, sire. So I said, all right. So he wanted nine more ounces. So I tell my man, all right, meet me up there at Diggs. You know, Diggs, so y'all know, Diggs, they, the whole family, you know, lost their life out in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey. You know, the the, 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 the the mother, the kids, everybody got, you know, massacred in the house. Rest in peace to them. Just sharing you the location. And, you know, that's what it is. But being that it happened in the 70s during the Heron era, they tore down that building to try and erase that memory. And in between there, trees started growing up. So it looked like woods. You know, me, I was Jamaican. Somebody tell them to meet me out at Diggs because they got the woods right off the cut in between Bradhurst and um, Edgecombe. So, uh, you know, downtown south. So now he comes and he meets me over there. So we stand up on the sidewalk and he got a brown paper bag with him. You know what I mean? Not a big bag. He's got a brown paper bag with him. About, you know, like a medium sized bag, not a small one. Not, not a medium. It's like, you know, a little bigger than that. But I just want you to get the picture. So now he turns around. Everything got a meaning. So don't sit there criticizing all this. Say nigga rambling because that's what I do. You don't like it. You already know the channel can be changed. No disrespect. Come back when it's something you want to hear. And we all good. You know what I mean? Or don't come back if you choose not to. But anyway, so now we sitting there, excuse me for kissing my teeth. So now we sitting there on the corner and we get ready to make the transaction. So we walk in the woods, you know what I mean? Over there at Diggs. So when we walk in the woods, um, he hands me the brown paper bag, you know? And when he hands me the brown paper bag, um, he pulls out the cooking pot that he cooked the crack in, you know, the powder cocaine into crack. And I'm like, yo. Why did you do that? He said, look, it no come back, are you? I said, dog, I told you it wasn't going to come back. You know what I mean? I told you just good for sniffing. You know, your man told you it was only good for sniffing. He's selling powder because of that, and he's the only one with it. You're supposed to sell the powder. And he's like, yeah, but he's moving so fast. Some other dudes told me that it looked good, that there's no way it's not going to come back. I said, it's supposed to look good. It cost me $80,000 to learn how to do it. That's why it looked good. You know what I mean? So he's like, yo, well, you know, I'm just telling you now, you know, um, I want my money back. You know what I mean? I said, but you cooked it, dog. He said, yo, no disrespect. It's no good. I want my money back. I said, dog, I told you that it was no good when I gave it to you. You know? So now when I do that, dude gets in his feelings. So now when he gets in his feelings, he looks at his man. And his man looks at me. You know what I mean? And then, you ain't going to believe this. You know what I mean? He pulls out a joint. He pulls out a big Dutty Tree 57 Magnum, a block joint with a dark brown wooden handle. You know, he pulls out a gun, but he don't point it at me. He just pull out the gun and, you know what I mean, put it down by his waist and say, yo, I want my money back. You know what I mean? So, so, but he ain't pointing at me, so, you know, he violated just for pulling it out. Let's get that right. Somebody put a gun on you, you're supposed to clap him. Don't get involved in the street because that's the rules. I'm going to tell you the rules in between these stories so you know don't get involved in it. A dude, pull a gun out, you're supposed to bust him in his ass. You know what I mean? Don't let nobody pull a gun. It's like a dude in prison put a knife out on you and you don't punish him. If a dude pull a weapon out on you, you have to, you know, use your weapon similar to their weapon or you got to get your, you know, your get back. You know what I mean? So now I got to shoot this dude because he done pulled the gun out. You know what I mean? But I got to make sure he don't shoot me because he got his gun in his hand, my gun in my waistband. I can't get to my gun because he already got his out. So I look at my man. I said, yo, what well, I'm what do I do with this? And he said, yo, my back, I didn't even know he was going to do that. He's like telling his man, yo, calm down, man, calm down. Chill out. So while he's telling them to calm down, so while he tell him to calm down, you know what I mean? I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at my man, and my man already know what I'm thinking. My man know how the rules go. You know what I mean? A man pull a gun on you, you got to shoot him. You know what I mean? man pull a knife on you, you got to stab him. So I'm looking at my man. He's like, yo, you need, I'm a bread you now. I'm a grew up with him from local picnic. I'm just come up here. I don't really know if I move. I know if I also, uh, you know, I, I, you know, you already know I saw it go a yard. I said, yeah, but, you know, uh, we don't do that. Even a yard, you know, you pull a gun out that is automatic war. You know, and he's like, yeah, but, you know, he just frustrated because he listened to the mother dudes and he went and cooked it up and it didn't come back. Right. You know, so. So, you know, just bear with him, man. You know what I mean? I said, bear with him. I'm, ready to, I'm thinking to myself, I ain't tell my man that. You know what I mean? I said, man, because that's his man. And plus, he got the gun and my joint still in my pocket. So I'm talking my hand, letting them know, man, everything good. All right? I got my hand. I'm like, yo, come on, dog. We ain't got to do all that. Let's, you, you want that? Get that back to me. You know what I mean? Get that back to you. So, of course, I got a little, you know, it was only $4,500 uh, uh, for the nine ounces. I was giving the whole thing for 18 
You know what I mean? And it was going for 25 on the street. So he's making money, but it normally goes for 15. I only charge him three grand more because it was my brethren. You understand? So he gives me the joint. You know what I mean? So when he give me the joint, my man see me looking at him. So I pull out the 4,500 to give him. My man stopped me and said, nah, you need, nah, 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 nah. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta give him that back. He pulls out um, 4,500 out of his pocket and he hands it to his man and he takes the pot and said, I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna work this and I take the loss of, you know, him cooking it up. You know what I mean? But he looked, my man looked at me and said, you need, come on, man, just, I'm going to take the loss, man. Let's just make it right. Me and you go back, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I mean? He said, you know, like man -a man You know what I mean? That means man to man. You know what I mean? Man to man. Let's, and, you know, all we got is our words. So he's like, you know, yo, man -a man You know what I mean? You know, just, just check. He said, matter of fact, you need here. And he gives me another 1500 So he gave me six grand. And he's looking at me and he's pleading with me in my eyes to leave it alone. But his man got them black eyes. I know his man's a cold killer, but his man is kind of comfortable because he got his money back right now. You understand what I'm saying? So my man's sitting there, excuse me for kissing my teeth. So my man's sitting there and he's like, yo, unique, man. Give me your word, man. Give me your word. It's over. You got the money back. I'm apologizing for my brethren. You already know one of your local homies done did some. You know, some some blood clot fuckery. And, you know, we make it right because in a yard man move and you tell me for, you know, make him live on the strength of you. So me, I ask you for make my brethren live on the strength of me. You know what I mean? So I got to do that because he could have killed my man last week for some fuck shit he did. So I told him, all right, yo, yo, you got that, man. You know what I mean? So I got my, I got $6,000. You know what I mean? And, he, you know, he took the pot, you know? Well, he gave him the 4500 and, you know, he gave me 1500 more in my pocket. So dude got his money back. He took the joint. And, you know, that's the way that played out. So now we leave. And when we get ready to leave, me and my man walk out. And my man said, you need man a man. It done, right? And I said, yo, I, it done. And, you know? And that's how it played out. If I tell the youngest, don't get involved in this, man. It ain't worth it because this thing crazy, man. I mean, it would have been that easy. You know, for dude to kill me or me kill dude. So it ain't like I can't get killed. I don't tell no war story. Like I said, I tell him I got cut in the face, booped in the head, shot four times, the whole nine. I mean, it's all a part of the street. That's why I tell you, don't get involved in it. So you ain't got to talk about it so casually like I talk about it. And you ain't got to deal with the demons that I deal with at night. I'm trying to prevent you from dealing with the demons. Cash app on the screen. I don't care if it's $5 a game. It'd be sold not to. I give you a lot of game. And it's to be sold. They go to Instagram up there. At least go to the Instagram. Oh, yeah. And definitely hit the emoji. Just hit the emoji at the very least. You ain't got to do no cash if you ain't got it understood. You know what I mean? Ain't no pressure. But at least hit the emoji so we get this thing in rotation. So they get a little bit of this little cheap YouTube money. We keep it moving. All right? So that's where we at right now. Don't say I didn't tell you. That's how Unique make an audio move. And... Make a what? Make an audio. All right. Hi guys, welcome to Platinum Cuisines. We're located in Freeport on the North Kamal. Just wanted to introduce my partner, Amy. Hi guys, how are you? And this is my sister-in-law, Diana, another partner. Um, I just ask that you come support our minority-owned business. We serve Asian fusion Caribbean cuisine, and we have a beautiful restaurant located on the Nautical Mile in Freeport, New York. And we're asking that you come check us out and also make sure to tune in to Mecca Audio TV. Cheers, cheers, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. Shot the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in haul. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. The Instagram it. page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin. Uh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Unique. probably the reason that him and your grams got along Unique. a man that generated millions on the block did uh. his time never squealing to the cops make an audio hey. Hey.